Hi guys, good morning or good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you for joining us for this morning's Facebook Live. And this morning I'm going to make a dinosaur that I haven't quite finished the example on. I was just quickly trying to stick on some little dots and finish it quickly now. It's a little, little hunchback it's gonna zoom in on dinosaur. Then. Its body might be a little bit small. We'll maybe go slightly different on the next one. Because I did this quite quickly, guys, I put a polystyrene ball into the body itself yeah. so that the legs wouldn't sink too much. Um, but you won't have to do that, okay? If you're going to let your legs set for 5-10 minutes or even a bit longer, they're going to hold up that weight a little bit better. But I just thought by having the polystyrene in there, it means it's not going to squash as much when I'm in a rush. And also it's quite warm in here today. So the modeling paste, because of the cocoa butter, will be very soft when it's warm meaning things want to sink a little bit until it's cooled down. Okay, so I'm going to start by getting my legs ready first so that they've got the longest amount of time. So last time I started with five grams of paste per leg, but I think I actually ended up with far less by the time I'd finished, so let's see. But don't worry if it's not exact. And if you don't want to weigh it, don't worry. You don't have to. It's absolutely fine if you decide not to weigh it five-ish. Close enough for me. Okay, so we're going to start by rolling it into a ball just to try and get rid of any creases and cracks. If one's a bit bigger than the other, don't worry because we're going to trim it down in a minute anyway. So rolling really firmly. Remember guys, if this gets a bit warm and sticky, just put a light dab of corn flour on your hands so that it doesn't stick to you quite as much. Same for your work surface as well. Okay, so I'm going to roll them into little sausage shapes now. Okay, so little sausage shapes. You want the legs to actually be fairly small. That's why I did, didn't want them to crush because I made them bigger so that they would be sturdier at first, but they just looked really big and chunky compared to the rest of the body. So I want them fairly slender. I'm just pressing it on my mat so that I get it a little bit flatter on the underside of the foot and actually you don't want them to be very tall so this is what changes I guess what the dinosaur looks like and we want it to be a triceratops so they're quite low down to the ground yeah I think I squashed my legs a little bit on the other one as well but that's fine so they're a little bit wider than a centimeter try and flatten the bottom can you see these are different lengths but that's fine and I'm going to cut them so they're no taller than two centimeters and when I cut them, hang on, let me cut it this way because it's going to make it easier for me. You even got a matching colour knife. I have, haven't I? I'm going to cut it to the two centimetres first, or roughly two centimetres. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut an angle. So this will be my highest point and I'm going to cut a slight slant inwards. Can you see from my fingers? Yeah, so that they'll go in like that. that so if you're using a different paste, don't let them dry for so long that when you push something through them, they crack. But because this one's got cocoa butter in, if I leave them there, they'll firm up, but not fully set, but just make them a little bit sturdier. On these ones, I wanna roll just on one end. It's almost a bit like, have you seen me doing the giraffe and the zebras? The back legs have got like this big fat bit at the top. So nice chunky thigh. Is it the thigh at that bit of the leg? And then it's thinner at the bottom down here. That kind of weird shape. Let's see if we can do the same on this one. So I'll roll a little bit at the bottom first. Let's see if I can keep it flat down there. Let's squash the top bit. Slightly different sizes. So let's squeeze it about a bit. Still slightly different sizes. I can move them about. As long as they haven't fully set when I stick them on, I can move them around a little bit. I want this bit here to be about the height of the lower bit that's cut on there, roughly. Yeah, they are a little bit different, aren't they, those ones? But it's what, okay. I think one of the hardest things in Kate, Kate well, in anything is making two things exactly the same now. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna push in the back of the leg, which will give me like, uh, it's not a heel, is it? Whatever that bit's called. This bit, just gives it a bit more shape on the back of the leg. A technical term for that bit on a dinosaur. I don't have a technical term for anything, do <laughs> me. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I've got a few little cracks there, but what I'm going to do is keep that as the side that I push the pose diary into. So I'm going to create a little dip 
for my polystyrene ball to go into. And then I'm going to put a little bit of water into there. Don't completely soak it, but try and get a layer in. If I don't put water in and then I put my polystyrene ball in, what happens is I get lots of air in there, but it doesn't cling to the polystyrene ball. And then when I try to roll it around to cover it, it kind of gets really loose. So just keep popping in a bit of water on those edge bits. So I want to press it fairly thin at one side because I want all the bulk to be at the opposite side, which I can then bring a tail out from. Okay, this is where I will forget which side is which though. So I want to try and roll out some of those creases. But if you don't roll them all out, don't worry, but as long as this goes behind the head, that's okay, because then you're not gonna see. I should have really taken my ring off today as well, because sometimes it does catch into the, the modeling paste. So we maybe have to work on that. So I'm kind of rolling to get, can you see this little cone shape? And let's see if I can rub the creases out of it the bottom of that. Mm, no, they don't want to disappear today. What are you doing, Richard? Just moving the mouse. So remember what I said, guys, about it doesn't actually matter if you don't put that polystyrene ball in. I've just done it because I'm doing things in a bit of a rush in the Facebook Live, so I don't have time to let those legs sort of set for several hours before adding all the weight of the body. So this way, by having the polystyrene in, there's a little bit less weight, so hopefully the legs will stay up a little bit more. Hopefully, that's the plan. <laughs> okay, so this is what it wants to look like kind of shape-wise from the side. So you've got that tail, the ball's in the middle, and then we'll pull it out a tiny bit at the front, but not too much. Okay. I am spinning a while or faffing with that. I'm going to leave the front bit for now. And first thing I'm going to do is take my two legs, and remember the dip should dip inwards, so don't put them this way around. They need to go this way around, okay? They're gonna go here, and cocktail sticks. I was gonna use a little, um, the little skewers, but I think a cocktail stick will actually be okay for this. So, hold this in between them, so you can see how wide apart you want them. It's up to you whether you want the legs really close together or wide apart. I guess they would be fairly wide apart because it's got a big body. There we go. Just a tiny gap in the middle, but actually the shoulders are quite far apart. Just make sure you don't put the stick in at an angle like this because it won't end up in the body. So either straight up or slightly inwards. It's maybe inwards a tiny bit too much, that. Okay, and then have a look at the height of your sticks compared to your body. So that's going to come out the top of my body. So. What I'm going to do is cut them down a little bit. There only needs to be a small amount sticking out of them for it to go into the body. So I'm going to put some water on the tops of these so that they do cling. Okay, and let me work out where that crease went because that needs to be at the bottom. And then I'm going to push these up fairly close to the front. a little bit of pressure. I'm going to put some more wrinkles. Just have to be careful I don't move it away from the legs too much. Can you see kind of around where the joint is and the creases are? So that instead of it looking really obvious that that's where we've stuck the leg, it starts to look like it was just the creases. It's pulling out my polystyrene a little bit, but that's because I've got it on the side. So usually I wouldn't lift it up. I would usually have it kind of facing me a bit more. I'm going to put the legs on at the back. Before like, or at the top of where the tail begins, so kind of the edge of the polystyrene ball. But you might have to nip it in a tiny bit where you want those legs to go. Just a tiny bit, so kind of here. And the same at this side. Otherwise, the back legs end up sticking out too much. Okay, so I'm gonna put some little creases from the back of my leg and even some at the front. Do the same on this one. It's from that little bit there. And some around the front. You can put as many creases on as you want. 
I actually meant to give it texture as well, but it's starting to firm up a bit, so I don't know. I think I've left it too late to put texture on. I was going to use the Dragon Imprint one for a bit of texture, but it's fine. Okay, so I want to lift it a tiny bit and then push this onto the side there like that. Okay, so I haven't added a stick into this one, but it should be okay without. And I'm just going to put a bit more water in here to make sure it sticks. So can you see how much it does bulge out at the top, the hip part? So that's why I wanted to try and squeeze it in a little bit first. I don't mind it bulging a little bit as long as it's not a ridiculous amount. I might even nudge the bottom of the leg inwards a tiny bit. And I can see I've got a bit too much water. Just absorb it back out with your brush if you put too much water on. Same on this one. I'll put some water on the top. I think I've actually already put it on the dinosaur as well. So pushing it on nice and firmly. My purple is actually pretty firm, is this paste. I think it's because I've had that one I opened a little while, so it's much firmer. Let's see. I'm just going to see how much I've got with this bit here. This is probably more than I used last time, actually. This is like more than what's gone in the body, isn't it? This is 46 grams. Let's see. So roll a ball, I'm just gonna squash it down first so we can see what it's gonna look like size-wise. It's pretty big, but although it is pretty big on my other one, to be honest, I might take just a little bit off so there's not as much weight on there. 30, there we go, 30 seems like a better amount. If you wanna use a circle cutter for this as well, you're very welcome to, but because it's not an exact circle, um, I haven't worried about that circle cutter. So let's take the ball, let's squash it down again. I've kept it a little bit thicker near the middle and I'm pressing it slightly thinner near the edges. Don't go like too thin, but I have gone a little bit thinner near the edges than in the middle. I don't know if you can really tell. Um, if I go, if I keep it really thin everywhere, it's just, it's going to want to flop and I don't want it to flop. So I'm going to put it part way up. Can you see it will naturally want to kind of go backwards anyway. We actually do want it to go head backwards a tiny bit, so that's okay. And I'm pressing it near the bottom. I didn't add any water, but I should have probably added water. Sometimes it just sticks without any. But let's put a little bit on there. So can you see pressing it on here? I'm going to push it so it's fairly flat here because I want it to kind of come up and around. Can you still see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If it's flopping too much, you can always add a little bit at the back here and it'll just like like part of its body or neck. I haven't done this on this on the other one, but I'm going to see what it looks like on this one. I actually thought it might just look like a little roll of skin at the back. That might be a bit too big. So just a small kind of pea-sized piece with a point on either end. That just Can you see just goes in there like that? Um, I just used my fingers now to make deeper indentations. So I pressed my thumb in and up. And of course, you don't have to use your fingers. You can use other tools. So can you see yep. the indentation there and then either side of that? Bring it up. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah, you can sit down for that one. Okay. If you hear my tummy rumbling, I apologize. I forgot to have breakfast and it's very hungry is my tummy. And it might start growling really loudly. Okay. So it's kind of once here, there and there. <laughs> And there and there. Again, if you prefer it without that bit, you don't have to have that bit. And it's up to you whether you want it up quite a bit or if you want it bent quite backwards. I think they do actually slope backwards quite a bit, don't they? Um, before it has too much chance to dry, just take a small ball in tool and you're going to press in. I was going to do it at the ends of my finger marks, but it won't give me many spikes, so I'm going to just start in the middle. So a little dip. If you want the little... I don't... Are they not are they horns on this bit? On the edge of its... I'm going to call it a mane. I know it's not a mane, is it? But I'm going to call it its mane. Um, yeah, if you want them bigger, use like a bigger bowling tool. If you want to keep them fairly small, just use a small one. I'm going to try and evenly space them. But actually, it's probably they could get closer together as they get smaller, as they come round. I tried to make it a little bit smaller as it came round. I don't know that you can actually tell that I tried to make it smaller, but I did on that last one. Carefully, you don't press out those finger marks too much when you're doing this. 
right, okay, I think it was about 25 grams, roughly. Yeah, almost 26, but that's fine. Okay, I'll start with a ball. Any cracks, we're going to put them to the back. We're going to push it onto the head itself. Now, if you're worried it's going to fall off, just put a cocktail stick on there, that's fine. Or a bit of a stick. A piece of spaghetti, you can use a piece of spaghetti. Um, it stuck okay from the last time, so I'm going to try again without. I'm going to push it on up here, like this. Okay, I'm going to try and press the forehead towards my mane that's not actually a mane. You guys know what I mean, right? Hopefully, you guys know what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to press the front here. So this is where I want my forehead to kind of go. Here, it is a little bit, isn't it? If I nip it in here and then press in more, usually gives me more kind of cheek area down here as well. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. Not too bad. Okay. I'm just going to push up a little bit here. Can you see in here? Can you see that there? If you bring them down to where you were, it's fine. Yeah. So they're in there? Yeah. Every time I press here, I end up squashing it somewhere else. So just be mindful of that. I'm going to go in again a little bit more here. And the more I go in here, the more it will bring out kind of the bottom of the face. So it'll look like it's got little cheeks. And then I'm going to use my fingers to press in for my eye sockets. The head kind of gets bigger the more I squeeze it everywhere. It's actually quite a human shaped face at the moment. Um, it won't be when we're finished, but at the moment it does look quite The This human's going to have big eyes. Yes. But I mean, this is kind of the way that, the shape that it would make a human-y face. Okay. I'm just going in more at the sides here for my tubes. Watch for your fingernails. I cut them as well yesterday. And I still catch them in everything. Now, I added a separate piece for its chin on that other one, but I think on this one I'm not going to need to because I've got quite a bit of bulk here can you guys see there that will become like the underneath part of its mouth so i'm going to leave that there can you see where i'm pressing my finger mm -hmm. am i holding it in shot still yeah you're fine okay cool just checking just checking but can you see it looks like it's got cheeks obviously that is not realistic of a dinosaur at all but i thought it was cute cute to have the cheeks okay i just used they're chocolate balls. You guys that have watched me do a few of these will have seen me use them all the time. They come in packs of white, but you can get them where there's white ones in no, with other colours. Um, so I already had these ones open. These were my frozen mix. But you can, if you're doing a lot of figures with these, you can buy them just in, in the white. And they do black and white as well. I was considering doing them with like green or orange or yellow eyes. And then I thought, well, it might look a bit more evil. Which I should have really done for that one, because that's the one pulling like the slightly more evil or cross expression. Bring him across it. There you go. So I was thinking, yeah, like a different colour might, like yellowy eyes, might make him look more evil. But um, this one looks more cutesy, so we're going to stick with white. I don't want this one to look evil. Okay. And you can nudge the cheeks up if you want. So I'm just using an ed edible pen. And these eyes are actually full filled with chocolate, so just... Watch that you don't put them somewhere really, really hot. Okay. I'm just gonna say so I'm just going to try and draw a circle the best I can on there with it. Okay. Then I'm going to leave a white circle in the middle of that. You can even leave two if you want. Let's see if we can get one roughly in the same place. They might end up a bit bog-eyed, we'll see. So even though my other um, dinosaur had its eyebrow pressed down, I still drew this in first and then I kind of pressed around it. Otherwise it was too difficult for me to get the black pen in, if not. I'm aiming for my white dots in the right, in the same place as the other one, but they've not ended up in the same place. And I'm just gonna put a hole in, well not a hole, but a dip where I want its little horns to go. If you want bigger horns, just make the dip a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go there and there. Hmm, what do we think? Sorry. It's just going to give me... Can you see a bit more definition there? You... 
Can you hear Richard going to to me? No, I won't mention it. Move, move, move the camera. So, if I just gently, and I'm going really gently with this, it's just it was difficult to get my fingers in because I don't want to smudge the black that I've already put on. And you could do this before you put the black on. It's just because I hadn't decided what I wanted to do. Like on that one, I put the black in first so that then I could squash that kind of eyebrow area down and it would go over the black. Does it look nicer with its the look raised now? So I'm just gonna try and nudge in a bit more here and here, a bit more definition on the sides. Can you still see that there, Richard? Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'll start with my ball. But what I'm going to do is pinch it a little bit in the middle. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So that, can you see we're getting this kind of shape? It'll probably change shape a bit anyway when I put it on, so don't worry if it's not exactly the same. I'm just holding it with this, this piece, okay? With this finger even. I'm going to actually cut a little bit off the bottom. And when I cut, I'm trying to cut at a slight angle. I don't know if you can really tell, so it slopes, so that this bit will come down lower than that bit. That's the plan. Then we're gonna see what it looks like against the face. It actually looks quite big when I put it on, doesn't it? But we can, oops, we can squeeze it around a little bit. Oops, I can't keep hold of anything today. So a little bit of water on here. I feel like I should have given this one little eyelashes. We can have those on afterwards, can't you? It is, I think we've had to come, it is a beak. Oh, is it a beak? Yeah. I know it, it looks, looks a bit it like one, but I didn't know it was. It does look a very big from the side. Does it? Turn is, turn is oh yeah, it has got a big, big beak. Okay, so I'll squash <laughs> it in a bit more. I could take it off and go a bit smaller, but I think what I'm gonna do is just squash it so it's kind of a bit wider than this one. Can you guys still see it there? Sorry, I had it facing me then, rather than you guys. It's looking good. And I'm gonna put a hole or a little dip in the top here. I thought I'd go for the bigger one, where I want the other kind of horn to sit. I think I want some little nostrils as well, but I might wait till the horn's on before I do the nostrils. But what I do want to do is add some little lines. Can you still see this from the bottom yeah. here? Yeah. They don't all want to be the same length, so try and get some a bit shorter, some a little bit longer. Okay. Then this one needs to be happier, so let's draw a line from the edge here. Upwards a little bit. Can you guys see that? Yeah makes it look happier straight away doesn't it um you can either use like your balling tool to then nudge into these corners or usually i use these little rubber ended tools and kind of roll them and can you see when i push it up it kind of lifts the cheek a little bit more as well does it look happy this one it looks very happy cool. happy is what i was going for looks happier than the other one doesn't it <laughs> I think it's brown on the other one there. So I'm going to roll a teardrop. I might roll it slightly pointier at the fat end as well. And then I'll try and get it into that dip that I've made. And then I'm going to squash it on in place. So it's not like a really long pointy one that I've got. It's a very chubby little one on mine. And then what I'm going to do is just put a couple of little lines coming up. A bit like I have done, you know, on the mouth. Can you see it? Okay, I'm a bit upset by what it looks like on the closer, side. A little close to you. They're both very like, they've got no shoulders. They look a bit like you, Richard. You've got shoulders, no neck. This is kind of like large pea size. I think Richard's upset that I said he doesn't have a neck. Uh, people think I'm going to do it from like straight looking. Well, you have to show people what you look like then. Richard shaved off all his hair on Friday. So he looks different now. <laughs> Okay, so we push them into the little dips. So can you see I've kept them fairly chunky rather than really long and thin. Just keeps it a bit cuter looking. We'll add a couple of those little lines. And I'm gonna need some smaller ones now that come around here. Um, just want a small little ball. So much smaller than the other horns. I'm going to try and put it in there. You can either leave it very rounded or oops, pinch it a little bit when it's in place to be slightly more pointed. Quite like it when it was just rounded, actually. 
So I just want to make sure now that when I'm adding these next ones that they're not getting bigger in size. The top sort of three can be a similar size. And then as they start coming down, I want them to get a little bit smaller. This is where really if you rolled all your balls together on the table, you'd be able to see the size of each one. So you'd be able to tell if any were the wrong size. So you know they're going down in size. That would be too sensible for me to just do that, wouldn't it? Let's see if we can get these next two a similar size. Yeah, you don't want them too big. Otherwise it looks scary if these bits are really pointy. Okay, so pop them in there. So that they're not like a proper point on them, fairly rounded. Can you see it okay? Yeah. Give it a little pinch and press on in place. Yeah, These should be the last ones. You don't see them as much, do you? I don't think those ones, but that's fine. You can put some tiny little dots of water, just not too much, because if I'm then adding powder, it's, it'll get stuck in the water. Hang on, I need to soften this a bit more. Otherwise, it's going to crack when I'm wanting to use it. Is everybody back at work now, guys? Or I think I've seen comments a few people started back, or they're like doing it a little bit a few days in, a few days out. So I want to try and make these different sizes and I probably should cut it rather than pulling it off with my fingernails. And it's up to you how many you want to put These on. things are quite nice and easy aren't they? They add quite a lot of like character to the look at. The yeah, look I think so. It's little warts. I don't know that technically they're not supposed to be warts on this, it's just the texture of its skin, but I'm not going to fully cover it because it would just take such a long time to fully cover it. So just a few, and I could have actually done these in a slightly different colour as well. I've opted for the same colour, but it would have looked nice in other colours too. I won't put tons on, otherwise you guys are going to get bored of watching this bit as well. And you can, you know, if you don't want to stick them on, but you still want little, like, marks, you could use, like, a piping nozzle, you know, with, like, a round end to just press for some impressions of little round bits. It's coming, there'll be pink dust on it. It's sticking to my finger now instead of to this, look. It's because I've got water on my fingers. And you can do this on like the legs and stuff as well, so. All over. I'm just I'm not gonna be able to dust the bits that are wet, that's the only problem. You guys can dust, but let it sort of dry everywhere first before you add your dust. Oh, I lost my dot. I'm going to refer to them as dots instead of walls from now on. <laughs> when they're so small it becomes difficult to roll So is this, this, is this one a boy or a girl? Um, I don't know. Did you hear my tummy then? I did hear That did there. sound like a, some kind of raptor. That was a crazy Dinosaur. <laughs> I'm going to put a tiny, tiny bit of water up near the top of the eye. Only a very tiny bit because... Bring, bring them in a little bit to you. If I catch the black, it will it will just make it run. Okay. You can use a circle cutter as well. You don't have to just squash a ball down like what I have done. Okay, so just tiny, tiny little bits. Otherwise, it will look really half asleep. So, can you see just... Does it show on there? You can see them just at the bottom, yeah. You can you can see they're very small. Okay, so I want to try and tuck it up to the corner. I think I've got it nudged up there against the edge. So it is like it's very small, but it does change what the eyes look like. Can you see the difference between that one and that one straight away? You would say yes, even if you couldn't to me, Richard, wouldn't you? Yeah, just, just, I agree. It's easier for Richard to agree than disagree with me. Right, some kitchen roll or something down on your work surface, because they just do wash off, but they can take quite a bit of wiping off to get them off, so it's just easier if you don't get it on your work surface. I will probably get it on everything. Okay, so let's see what we've got. I've got some dust across the table as well, but I've got these ones to hand. Aubergine. Aubergine might work well with that. That pink I think is going to be too pale. 
I might keep it out for just dusting, but not for like the cheeks. Let's go for the claret for the cheeks, maybe. Actually, it might be a bit dark. I'm going to use my bigger brush, my Sylvia Mancini brush for the cheeks. In fact, you know what? I might mix the two pinks together. I do have like an in-between coloured pink that I could use. I'm just not sure whereabouts I've put it. I think I put my collection of pinks away on the shelf and forgot to get them back out again. All right, nostrils. Oh yeah, nostrils. I just it's only just commenting. Well done. Thought, Thank you for that. Good thinking. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going right, to use so zoom in. Okay. anything that's pointy. So the K220, I use a lot for like little holes, but you can just use a cocktail stick if you prefer. So you're going to push it in and out to the side a little bit. See if I can get it in a similar place in. Out. So rather than just going in, I've gone in and then kind of edged it up and out a tiny bit. Depends how flared you want those nostrils to look, really. Does it look better with nostrils now? Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> Thank you very much for reminding uh, <laughs> us of our nostrils. Okay, so we're going to catch the bit of the cheeks that stick out. It's not a very scary dinosaur, is it, this one? It's Triceratops aren't really scary anyway, are they? I think no, they're my favourite. They probably would be if you met one in real life. They're my favourite um, of the dinosaurs, I think, because they're cute. Yeah, down a bit. They're cute. Okay, so I'm just trying to think what colour I want the beak bit right, to be. And toenails? Oh, yes, I did forget his toenails. Oh. Good After to, forgetting good, them on the other one as well. It's good to remember he's concentrating today because... Uh... <laughs> you guys are noticing everything I've forgotten. We're doing toenails first before we're finishing dusting? Yeah. Okay. Because I'll forget to put them back on again. I'll finish dusting and I'll forget. Okay, a bit of water on the front. I might just put them on the front feet. Just, mm. no, we'll stick them on all. That was me being lazy where I said I was just going to put them on the front feet. Okay, I'm just going to go for little balls. They're pressed onto the front. So don't flatten them completely. Have them so they stick out a tiny bit. Let's see, let's stick this one on here. I think three on each will be okay, do you think? I don't know how many they actually have. Yeah, somebody said ears, but I don't, know, I don't think dinosaurs have like ears like we do. I think they have like little holes, do they, for yeah. their ears? I think, I think they just have little holes rather than like a animal ear. But I could be wrong. I don't know a lot about dinosaurs. Apart from watching Jurassic Park. Yes. That's where all my knowledge of dinosaurs comes from. It's always never going to sit on a toilet when you're watching in a dinosaur park. Do you know about the first Jurassic Park? Yes, but I've never been to a dinosaur park, so I think um, I'm safe. Stay away from the toilets. It'd be no good for me, would it? Lots of you guys have made it. I've seen you all sharing your pictures of it. I'm gonna. I know that pink isn't really a colour for the horns, but I'm giving it a bit of pink. Because so why not? In fact, I'm going to add a bit of pink along the edge. Probably got a bit too much in my brush, but that's okay. In fact, you know what? I might add the pale pink to its little beak area. Can you see it? Yeah, okay. Thank you. So, going for the lighter pink. You see, just around the edges. It's just so it's not as flat colour-wise. And then let's add some... Did you say it was called the beak? Yes. See the beak? And a little bit under under its chin. You can't actually tell that it's a different colour pink, can you, to that? Maybe a little bit pink around its knee, knee area. That's not too rough. A little bit pink on the end of its tail. Yeah, for confirmation, dinosaur, triceratops don't have ears. Thank okay. you. <laughs> you learn all sorts, don't we, from these Facebook lives when we're making these little animals and things. So this aubergine one's a fairly dark colour. And I'm just gonna try and go yeah, into kind of the said, creases. Uh, reminds her of the baby dinosaur from T V. Which one? But not the not the mama. But I think it looks like the baby one from mm. oh, From what? The film we were talking the T V series we were talking about earlier. Obviously they're wrong colour. No, dinosaurs. Was yeah. it called dinosaurs? Do you guys remember? Was it Jim, was it Jim Henson puppet? I think it was. See, look, I've gone too dark there. Let's see. 
I remember watching it when I was a kid. I think it was called The Dinosaurs. No, the baby wasn't a Triceratops. What was it? Well, they were... He was a T... Was he a T-Rex? A fat T-Rex, the dad. And he worked on a building site and his boss, I think, was an angry Triceratops. A bit more like that, but way angrier. Oh, so if your colour's too dark as well, guys, let me just see if I can nudge that cornflower down there. Oops, covered the entire thing in cornflower. Um, you can dilute your colours a little bit with cornflower. So if you don't want it quite as strong a colour. So I'm just trying to go in, you know, the dips that I made with my fingers, and then I'm trying to avoid the bits at the sides of the dips so that there's a bit that looks like it sticks out. Am I making any sense? This is the blending brush. By Sylvia Mancini. This is the Sylvia Mancini one. Ooh, it's got quite a bit of eyeshadow as this baby now. I wasn't aiming for an eyeshadow look, I was just aiming to get it a little bit darker. But it looks like it's wearing eyeshadow. But the other brush is just too big and it'll drop the powder. Can't flower on my fingers as well. It'll drop the powder everywhere, which I don't want. So just a little bit on there. Maybe even go a little bit darker under here. So kind of under where the little horn bit is. Um, I'm just darkening just the very edges. So by using the smaller, flatter brush, I can just get a little bit neater at the very edges. So the bigger brushes are good for a bigger area. Do you know I think one day we should do is, uh, I mean, I don't know if people would like this, but you could do like just a series on dusting. Mm. Do you think I need to when I put dusting on most of the other things uh, or it's not? It's amazing how, how adding dust does change things so much. And I think, you, you know what I mean? I think you can never, I, I think it would be quite popular. It could be very boring to watch, so if I do it properly. I'm fairly happy with it from the front. And obviously, again, with this one, we could... We could even still put purple on this, actually. This might look quite nice with a bit of purple on its mouth. Or beak. Have I got this in shot? Have I got it completely yeah, no, out of shot? Yeah, you're in shot there at the moment. Okay. So we're not dusting your other one up. Well, I'm just seeing what it looks like with this colour on it, really. <laughs> I won't do the whole thing. I just wanted to well, that's see... that's one thing, we've not done any Facebook Live's airbrushing. That'd be quite funny. No, it's because it makes such a mess. Yeah, you probably would get it all over the camera. Though. So at the moment, when I'm working, guys, I've got like the smallest amount of space to work in. Um, because all the products, <laughs> postage and packaging is taking up so much room here. Um, yeah, maybe it would look nicer, lighter rather than darker. Um, so, yeah, I don't have much space. So I, at the moment until we can find some more space. If I got an airbrush out, I would get it on everything. You'd all be receiving things in the post that I've uh, got a bit of airbrush color on. Yep, I've decided this one is a boy. Oops, I went a little bit heavy handed there with that bit. He needs some more warts added now. Are we just in this one fully? No. Okay. Not fully. <laughs> I just, oh, he's going to need something on his head though to match that purple now, isn't he? Yeah, Instagram is easier for me to share it, but on Facebook it's not easy for me to share it. But I can see what you guys have done, or like on Facebook, um, especially if you share it in like the community group, then that's easy for me to see it then. But yeah, so we but all... yeah, on Instagram, I tend to be on Instagram a bit more now than I am on are you? Are you Facebook. Are you? I am, yeah. I know you're not, are you? But I tend to look after the Instagram stuff a bit more. Well, he's got pink now. Sorry, Richard, have I got them out of shot for no, you? No, 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 right. 